Welcome back, everyone. As promised, we've been joined by two more guests. Alberta Montgomery and Reverend Hunter are here to talk to us about National Adoption Month. Reverend Hunter is the pastor at Prayer Temple in Newark, and we're looking forward to having them both tell us a little bit about a program called One Church, One Child, as well as National Adoption Month. Thank you both so much for joining us. Ms. Montgomery, what is One Church, One Child? Okay, I'm going to pass that one to <laughs> Okay. <Reverend Hunter. laughs> <laughs> okay, One Church, One Child is a program that started in 1980 in Chicago by Father George Clemens, a Catholic priest there. And uh, the One Church, One Child works on the premises that if each church would adopt <clears throat> one child, then there'll be no children waiting. Now, it doesn't mean that the church would have to adopt a child. It means that if the church could get one parishioner, one member, one congregate, to adopt a child, then there'd be no children waiting. Our aim is to support the state in recruitment for permanent homes for African American and biracial children, or we can say minority children. Mm -hmm. That's our purpose. Okay. And who makes up the board of One Church, One Child? One Church, One Child, we have a board of uh, actually five persons uh, serves on the board. Uh, Mayor Pugh, who is the coordinator, who serves as a liaison person between the churches and the board. We have Reverend Fred Banks, who's from Central Baptist Church, Reverend Willie Times, who she's a member of uh, Ebenezer Baptist Church, and uh, Miss Alberta Montgomery, who's a, a member of Union Baptist Church, and of course, I pastor the Prayer Temple Church in uh, Newark, Delaware. And what is, it? you also want to talk about National Adoption Month. Yes, in November, most people uh, let it slip past them. November is National Adoption Month, and the thing that has, I guess, highlighted the nation in, uh, over the years was a story about a priest adopting a child. And the story was actually about Father George Clemens, who has now adopted three sons, and they're all adult sons. And every year in the month of November, that movie usually is aired featuring Lou Gossett, as the, uh, Lou Gossett Jr., as the priest himself who's doing the adoption. Yes. How many children in Delaware are in need of adoptive homes? Uh, right now, the state is looking for adoptive homes for 110 children. Uh, there are more children in foster care currently in the state of Delaware. There's about 1,100 kids living outside of their homes. 900, over 900 are in foster care. Where are they living? Where are the other children living now? Uh, the kids who are waiting to be adopted, most of them are in foster homes. A few are in institutions. Okay, that's, that's what I was wondering. Okay. Um, who, who can adopt? Well, who can adopt? You can adopt. Can I adopt? <laughs> this is, when, I, when, I, when I got this question, I'm like, I really want to know, as a, as, you know, as a single woman, could I adopt a child? You probably can. Uh, you need to be over 21. Uh, you need to have uh, a house or an apartment. You don't have to own your own home. Um, you should have some kind of income. Um, you, the most important thing is that you know something about parenting a child. Um, that most of all, that you could love an adoptive child as if it was your own biological child. Um, you also need to have a good understanding of children, can uh, demonstrate some patience. And those are some of the requirements of an adoptive parent. When, when you're looking at people who are being considered for adoptive parents, does it help if they've been a foster parent previously? Well, number uh, years ago, it did not help, but I'm glad to say today that that is one of the ways that you can start the adoption process. You can be a foster parent for the Division of Family Services or one of the adoptive agencies, and uh, if that child is freed for adoption, meaning if the pa child's parents' rights are terminated, then the foster parent would be uh, considered. I just want to, uh, I think, go back to the other question which you asked 
how many children were waiting in the state of Delaware. And I think I would have said like 190 some. And those 190 some children, what we are actually saying is those are the children whose parent, parental rights have already been terminated by the parent by the court system and they mm -hmm. are legally ready to move on mm -hmm. into homes. Mm -hmm. How long does the whole process take? If I, and where do I go? Where, where do I start? <coughs> if I am ready, if I'm in a position to adopt a child, who do I call? Well, there are a number of adoption agencies and the children in, uh, under the care of Delaware are usually with other agencies like Catholic Charities, Children and Families First, Bethany House, um, there, there are a number of uh, adoption agencies that you could go to. Now we have a website address. Would that website help me or help anyone who's considering adoption? Absolutely. The website basically would list the children, give you an inf a little information about each one of them, and also it has a number that you can call. Okay, let's do that now. Let's give out the website address. It's www.adoptuskids.com, and the phone number is up. It's 1-800-200-4005. So with November being National Adoption Month, what is the state of Delaware doing to acknowledge that? Do you know? You want to talk or want me to? Oh, you talk some and then I'll talk. Okay. Uh, every weekend, in the state of Delaware, there's some kind of activity going on celebrating adoption. Uh, the uh, APHIS, uh, Adoptive Family Information uh, Services, uh, they usually do something the first Saturday. We are doing, which is, which was actually yesterday, and next Saturday, One Church, One Child will be sponsoring a prayer breakfast in Dover, and it's free uh, at the uh, Crossroad Christian uh, Center. And the following Saturday, we'll be doing something in Lower Delaware. The uh, Division of Family Services will have a, like an adoption fair uh, going on in the Lower Delaware. So every month something is going on. On the radio, we even put out commercials that twice every Saturday and twice on Sundays, reminding people that it's National Adoption Month and they should get out and adopt. One other thing, One Church, One Child is not an adoption agency. We are an adoption educational tool we want to uh, bring a high awareness to the community and the African-American church community of the need to find homes for our children that are waiting in foster care. Did you want to add something? Actually, he covered it pretty good. Okay. Uh, we also, during November, <laughs> we try to appear on programs like this yes. to get the word out. Uh, we also try to do more um, announcements in churches flyers and things like that. What, what help is provided for, is there help provided for someone who just has adopted a child? Ah, uh, yes. Um, for some of the children, depend, dependent on their special needs, right. there might be financial assistance for, for the adoptive family. Also, uh, after a parent adopts a child, there are a number of support groups that are That's sponsored right, yeah. through mm -hmm. APHIS uh, that, would, that would help them. Now, I started to ask this a little bit earlier, but just to continue with it, from the time I've made it clear that I'm interested in adoption and to the time I have a child in my home, do you have any idea what that time span is? That, that length of time really does Varies. vary. Varies. Yes, yes. 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 Uh, first <coughs> of all, if, uh, there are two kind of children. One, uh, those that are, they have a goal, their permanency goal of adoption, but they, they're not legally free. So it would take longer for those children because it has to go through the uh, court process to terminate the parents' parental right. rights. Then we have the other children who are freed for adoption. That process would take a, a shorter period of time. Um, and I'm glad to say, over the years, the time has shortened. Yeah, because I remember before, I just in hearing things, yes. it was like years yes. of waiting. And Okay, well, we want to give out another phone number in case people do have more questions. You can contact Mary Pugh at 302-762-9220, or you can call Reverend Hunter at 302-376-0110.